Extreme Restoration Alliance is a 501c3 nonprofit conservation organization. Our mission is to work with the local community to better the conditions in our watershed. I'm here on a beautiful creek. It's got shade, the water looks clean, there are boulders. Everything should be okay, but it's really not. Um, over 100 years ago, this creek, like all other creeks in the area, were choked full of salmon, and it actually looked quite a bit different. It was more spawning gravel, there were a bit logs, there were even beaver dams, uh, and uh, the amount of salmon were about 20 times of what we have now, at least 10 times. The stream is very deficient in large wood and pools, and those are critical elements for a healthy fish population. So right here at this spot, it's a straight stretch, there's no uh, complexity to the channel, so we're going to add wood to it. We're going to create some pools, some good slow water areas for the fish to survive uh, the winter in. One of the benefits here is that all the money that comes into this local contractor is spent in the local community and it's thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars. That benefits the oil companies I buy oil from, fuel, employees, rigging shops, this economic money stays in the area. It's not like money that's, that's in a grant that goes somewhere else. This is all for local area work. I'm the landowner of the property here in Shan Creek where we're doing the stream restoration project. And this is my family home. I was born and raised here. It was my parents' home before me. And I feel very honored to be the caretaker of this place. And when the Stream Restoration Alliance very first approached me to discuss doing this project on the stream, I was really excited about the impact that it not only can have on the environment and on helping our fish, but also what it can do for my own property and the beautification and just the ability to restore it to something somewhat like what it used to be. Like I mentioned, I grew up here, so I used to run around in these woods and have fun. And I remember the days when I was little when there was great big fish in the stream and lots of babies. And I didn't even really notice how much it had changed until Dan came along and started talking about how there needs to be pools to preserve the fish habitat. It's nice to see that there's some people out there that are working in this direction towards improving what's been destroyed. A lot of times you're working in a lot of uh, vegetation, a lot of existing trees, and the goal here is to put these logs in with the minimum impact on the ground that's possible. And so we try not to scar the existing trees, we try not to remove any of the existing trees, we want the shade here in the creek to keep the water cool. So we're, our goal is to always have a low impact approach to putting these logs in. We're also putting in big boulders. Um, we're also monitoring, a lot of times monitoring these streams years after these projects have went in to make sure they're successful. There are fish counts before the work goes into place and there are fish counts after the work goes into place. We're on the banks of the Lower Jones Creek where we did a restoration project two years ago. Part of that project was to restore fish passage. The other part was to restore riparian vegetation on the bank. This area where I'm standing was six feet tall in blackberries. We ripped all the blackberries out. We planted native trees and shrubs. We installed irrigation. The landowner has watered these. And these plants are two years old. They're doing fine. And uh, the importance of uh, woody riparian vegetation is that it provides stability to the stream banks. And uh, they also provide shade to the stream and eventually woody debris that goes into the stream and cre creates habitat. Here at this culvert, there was a three foot drop. We restored the stream channel and grade. Uh, as you notice, the channel has started to adjust to the new grade. It's got a step pool series that has formed here. It's beautiful habitat. There's no problem for fish to now swim through the culvert. Volunteers help us uh, plant these trees. They also help on other aspects of our uh, restoration work, and they're critical to our mission. Without volunteers, we wouldn't have the in-kind match that we need um, for grant monies to do these bigger projects. I'm the habitat chair for the Southern Oregon Fly Fishers and Grants Pass, and that's one of the, uh, well, the goals of our club, is to do what we can to help fish projects in the Grants Pass area. And then another reason I do it is because the, um, 
you know, it's part of our state. This is what people come here for. We have, <clears throat> you don't have streams like this in Kansas. I don't want to knock Kansas, but that's why people come here. That's why people move here. That's why people want to live here. They come here on vacation. Well, they see things on vacation that we see every day. So those are some reasons that I do what I do. Because if we can get this whole area back to a more natural state, everybody benefits. Uh, it's going to be more beautiful naturally. The creeks will be more beautiful. There's going to be less flooding in all probability. The fish numbers will go up. Wildlife will increase. Otter benefit. All kind of wildlife. And people will benefit too. It's going to be a lot more fun going out in the creeks. And there's going to be a lot more fish to see. And for those who like catching them, there's going to be more fish to catch. And we'll probably have more people coming here who want to fish. So it's really a win-win-win situation all the way around. But we really need help to achieve this. Uh, so anybody who sees and hears this, if you see how good this work is, you want to support us, please contact us. And uh, we can use any help we can get.